beginning at verse 7. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient, stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have perse has persevered. You have heard Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Last week, we talked about being generous. And we looked at some of the problems of having wealth and it, how it can affect us. But when we turn it over to God and follow his commands to be generous with our resources, we talked about not just money, but our resources, our time, our talent that we can devote to serving others, to ministering to people who have, have a need. And when we turn that over to God, God not only blesses us, but we become a blessing to those around us. But sometimes, before we can bless others or receive God's blessing, we need to work through a problem that we might be having. And when we recognize that those problems come from Satan, and when we stand our ground, the scripture says he will flee from us. And so today I want us to look at being patient as we wait on God, not only to help us in times of trouble, but for his return as well. Now when my kids were little, they'd get impatient because we wasn't doing something fast enough or quick enough or didn't have enough money. And I said, if you want to learn patience, Go catfishing, because sometimes they bite right away. Sometimes you can stand there for hours before you get a bite. And so they go, Dad. But it's true. If you want to learn patience, go fishing, because sometimes they bite right away. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you can sit there all day and not, not get a bite. You know, with the holidays before us, We've just finished Halloween. We've got Veterans Day. We've got Thanksgiving coming. We've got Christmas coming. We've got New Year's coming. Our world suddenly goes from 33 speed on a phonograph to 45 to 78. And you stop and think about that. 33 was the slowest, then 45, and then 78. And you know, I don't know about you, but we used to We'd play our, our 45s, and then we'd flip it up on 78, and we'd have the chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> our world seems to be speeding up, especially during those, those holidays that are before us. And we have less, less patience. And so the question becomes before us, when should I be patient? So let's see what James has to say about that question. First of all, he said, you should be patient when circumstances are uncontrollable. When we face our face with life issues, there are some things that we can't control. We can take good care of our health, eat right, exercise, well, maybe not exercise, but we can, you know, there's things we can do to keep us healthy. Mommy. And there's some things that we can't control. Yeah. We can't control this itch that April and I have. We itch all the time. We can put stuff on it, but it always comes back. But James uses the example of a farmer. They go out, they prepare the ground, they plant the seeds, and then they patiently wait for the rains to come both in the fall and in the spring. They have to wait until the harvest. 
Sometimes we need rain in the middle of our, of our crops growing, and so it's a crucial time. And so they wait patiently for all of this to take place. And then comes the harvest. And we understand that the farmer has no control over the rain, the heat, the storms, the economy that affects the price that he gets for his grain. And the example of the farmer also applies to us as well. There are things in our lives that we have no control over. Sickness, unexpected bills, the loss of our home, our job, maybe the end of our marriage. Or if you're a young kid and you're 12 or 13, you have to wait until you're 14 to get a driver's permit. That's hard to do. They didn't have that when I was growing up in school. You went up and you got your driver's license at 16. I got mine on my birthday. We had broke down, we needed parts, so we went up to get it. Dad says, well, you might as well take your driver's license test while you're here. So we took the test, we drove. That was the quickest driving test that anybody's ever had that I talked with. We went around two blocks and I parked and he said, congratulations, you're done. <laughs> because it was lunchtime. <laughs> but I had to wait an hour to get into the courthouse to get my license. So I had to be patient before we could go in and, and actually get my driver's license. So there are some things that we can't control. But when we learn to be patient, life will be a lot less stressful and a lot more enjoyable. And trust me, it's hard to be patient with this itchy thing that we got going on. Because they still haven't figured out 100% what caused it, what brought it on. We got an idea, but it's not in concrete. And so we have to learn to be patient. Because when we're patient, and we let God control things, life is much more enjoyable. But when we learn to be patient, we also need to work while we wait for God to answer, while we wait for God to do whatever he's got in mind to, to take place for us. Secondly, we need to be patient when people are unchangeable. When we become a follower of Christ, our life changes. And we begin to live differently than before. Before I was a Christian, I drank, I run around. Hours didn't mean anything when I was in school if I wanted to stay out all night. I did, I had no, no restrictions per se. But, when I became a Christian, that all changed. Things that I used to do, I no longer do. Have no desire to do them. And when we try to tell others about what Jesus has done for us, we often get a negative reaction. They may say, that's fine, you live your life, I'll live mine. And some may not say much. But there are those who will oppose you, who will ridicule you, who mistreat you, who spread rumors that are not true about you. Their sole purpose seems to be to cause us suffering in our lives. And we have to be patient with these people, for they seem unchangeable and unteachable. Our best efforts to reach them is to live a consistent life, making sure our words and our lifestyle match. Because believe me, the world watches to see if what you say is how you live. And James uses the prophets from the Old Testament as an example. As the prophets shared God's word with them, that prophet had to be patient and allow God's words and God's commands to slowly reach the people. They were stubborn. 
And so they, they had to wait. They could share the word. Sometimes they would accept it, and most of the time they reject it. If you go back and read the works of the prophets in the Old Testament, how often did the people reject the prophets' words until things got so bad that they said, do something for us. And he did. He said, I reminded you. This is what happens if you don't follow God. And the same thing applies to us today as well. The people of Israel often eject, rejected God's word, even persecuting the prophets, even killing them at times. And some of our prophets often spent years of sharing God's word before they saw any results. And sometimes they didn't see the end results of their words that God had given them. When we're trying to reach a person or a number of people, they often seem uninterested in all that we do. And all that we can do is to pray for them, love them, forgive them, bless them, share God's word with them, and love them to, as the best we can. And despite all of that, they may still reject our message. It seemed beyond reach. But they are. If we try to change their lives and get them to follow Christ on our own efforts, we're going to fail. All we can do in those situations is turn them over to God. We share the word. We plant the seed. Sometimes we water by nurturing, becoming their friend, then begin building bridges. But it is God who brings the harvest. He is the one who brings them around to the point where they will accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We need to learn to be patient and allow the Word of God, the Spirit, to minister to those people. God's Word says, be patient with them, remember the prophets, speak on my behalf. And be faithful. And if we follow those steps, God has promised that he will, we, he will bring results in the lives of those that we're ministering to. So as you do your best to share God's message of love and salvation, there are times when you may feel devalued and unappreciated by those that you're trying to reach and love. And we need to remember the prophets. And many others, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. And yet those people, the prophets, those that people that we know who continue to be faithful despite the hardships, they are the ones who give us hope because they waited patiently as God, through his spirit, worked on those who had been told about the salvation of Jesus Christ. Our missionaries in foreign countries are another prime example. They have to be patient when they share the gospel message. Because sometimes in the communist countries, if they find out you're a Christian, they persecute you. They throw you in jail. Some countries even put their, the missionaries to death. And so we have to be patient and let God do his thing in the lives of those that we're ministering to. And third, we need to be patient when problems are unexplainable. Verse 11 says, we give great honor to those who endure under suffering. And James uses the example of Job. Satan and God had a conversation in heaven. And Satan said, there's not much going on. Everybody's following you. Everybody's not listening. And he said, well, have you tried Job? And Satan said, no, you won't let me. And so God said, okay, you can go to Job and you can test him, but he will remain faithful. That was God's message to Satan. And so Job, Satan went down and began to test Job. The only thing that Satan could not do was take Job's life. So quickly, Satan brought about four different things in the life of Job. The first one was the messenger came to Job 
and told him that the enemy came and took all of his oxen and donkeys and killed all of his servants. And before that servant had finished, the second one came and told him that fire fell from the sky and burned up all of his sheep and his servants. And before that servant had finished, another came and told Job that the enemy came and took all of his camels and killed all of his servants. And then the th fourth servant came and said that a great storm came and hit the house where his children were enjoying a time together. The house collapsed on them and they were all killed. And then, to add insult to injury, Job became covered with boils. Talk about depressing news. Everything that Job had, all of his wealth and his animals and in his family were gone. They were killed, they were dead, they were stolen. Now that would be enough to make anyone want to turn away from God. And yet, Job never lost his faith in God. He didn't know why all of this was suddenly happening to him, because God didn't tell him. He didn't know the why, but he remained faithful during it all. Job could not explain why this was happening to him, but he remained faithful. So as we go through life, there's a lot of things that happen to us and we have no clue why. When we had our car accident, we have no idea why. We know what caused it, but we had no idea why God allowed it. We have no idea why God is allowing all of this itch on us. We've got our speculations as to why or what causes it, not why. You know, what, what is God wanting? What is God trying to, to tell us? What's he trying to say to us? But there are times, and there are some things that are unexplainable from our perspective. All we can do is be patient and put our faith in God and know that God is up to something. And in his time, he will make us aware of it. Maybe you're experiencing one or more of those issues right now in your life. James reminds us to be patient and allow God to do his work in us or to those that we minister to. <coughs> that doesn't mean that we sit around and wait. James reminds us to continue to do the work that God has given us to do. That means continuing to live a lifestyle that the, as the world watches points to the fact that you're a follower of Christ. The worrying, the things that we say and do tells the world that we're a follower of Christ. So we're still to do, to reach out and to minister to those people despite all of the hardships that's going on in our lives. Such waiting sometimes it's designed just to help us grow in our faith. And in closing this morning, I want to share a promise that God has given us. It's found in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And this is what it says. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's a promise that if we're faithful and continue to serve God despite the hardships that maybe we're facing, the trials we're going through, God has promised to see us through it and give us the strength that we need to endure it. Are you being patient? God is going to give you the strength that you need to be able to continue. So don't give up. <coughs> keep waiting. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Because God is faithful. And he will see us through those difficult times. 
even if we don't understand what's going on or what God wants. Amen? Amen. All right, next week, we're going to look at part two of being patient. So uh, you can read these verses over again, study them a little more in depth, and we'll see what else God has in store for us. Let's take our hymnals and turn to number 461, please. Number 461. Let's stand as we think of Starson. 